Hello, Jade. Yeah, listen, it's Sam from Bug Realms. I really need your help. Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly, so if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So guys, with two more shows left that I'll be attending this year, both the Eastern Invertebrate Show and the Southern Invertebrate Show, I've been thinking of a varied amount of animals that I've never owned before. And you know what popped into my mind? Something that everybody keeps that's in this hobby one time or another. Uh, well, not everybody. I'm just talking absolute rubbish now. What am I going on about? We'll start that again. Something that quite a lot of keepers have kept at one stage or another in their life. And I know zero about. That's right, a big fat zero. And that is, of course, snails. I don't dislike them. They're, I have no hatred towards snails. I just never have got one. Oh, I am considering getting one in the future. So if you guys at home are considering a certain animal that you know nothing about, it's always best to do your research first. Now I can understand online can be full of intimidating people and you can also get very controversial information. But if you do know someone and you're lucky like me that has the knowledge on that specific animal, get in touch with them and ask them to give you a little step-by-step -step guide. So me, personally, I decided to get in contact with the lovely Jade from Jade's Jungle. If you haven't checked out her YouTube channel, please do. The link is in the description below. You will love this girl. She is amazing and she is hilarious. I love her to bits. So I thought of a few questions to ask Jade and I thought, you know what? Why don't we make this into a video so you guys at home can have those answered qu- Answered qu- I'm doing it again. So you guys at home can have your questions answered too. So Jade, here are my questions for you. First of all, is there such thing as a beginner's snail? Like what would you recommend me to get for my first one? Okay, so the two main snails that I recommend for beginners would be a fullicker, although they are a little bit funny, so the main one that I would recommend is reticulata. Now reticulata is a breed that does require a heat mat, which is kind of a downfall on your first snail because not a lot of people want to buy the heat mat and the thermostat that you need since snails are such cheap and easy pets it can be a pain to sort of have to buy um, products that are really expensive so that's one downfall but the best thing about them is that they grow huge and they don't tend to have a lot of problems so the reason why I recommend Fullicur but sort of say that they can have issues is because they've been very inbred so they're a lot smaller as you can tell this is one of my jade snails she's quite small, well, a lot smaller than should be, should be probably about that big. And they can suffer a lot of problems with eating and deep retraction syndrome, um, their shells can be smashed and bumpy and things like that just because of the way that they've been bred unfortunately. So if you are going to buy a follicle, I would recommend you go and find an F1, which means first generation from a wild caught snail. In that case you get the best genetics and they also don't need a heat mat, which is a bonus because a lot of people when they get their first snail is because they want a cheap and easy pet and it's not cheap if you buy loads of stuff for it. So. <laughs> the only one that I wouldn't recommend for a beginner, because I mean snails are easy aren't they, they're just snails, is a tiger. And now I don't recommend a tiger because um, they sort of suffer the same problem as Fullicur because they lay a lot of egg. So you can get a tiger that is really sensitive and kind of runty and stunted, but also they take three years to mature and they like it at 30 degrees and constant. They don't like any fluctuations, so if you're a beginner that's never had a snail before and you sort of forget to spray the tank one day or your temperature fluctuates when it gets to winter, then that's probably not going to be ideal and they do have quite a high mortality rate in captivity as well, so the only one I wouldn't recommend is a tiger. Ah, oh, fantastic. Thanks, mate. I really appreciate that. So now I've got an option of two different snails here to go for. Which one? Who knows? But thank you so much for letting me know that. I had no idea. Now, my next question for you is going to be, I've heard of albino snails or albino looking snails. What, what does that mean? Are, like, are they different species or is it just a colour morph? Okay, so for the purpose of this question, albino means white, so a white shell or a white foot because technically um, the snail's not albino because that just means it lacks colour pigmentation, whereas these are not lacking in colour pigmentation, that's just the sort of colour that they are. So sometimes the white foot can be sort of natural, like reticulata, they're more white in the flesh, but sometimes you get a different colour morph, like this is called a jade, and that's where it has a white body and a dark shell, whereas usually they would have a dark body and a dark shell. For Fullicur, you can get a jade, jadatsi, redatsi, and a normal. Um, 
they're exactly the same species, they're just different colours, so uh, they can all live together and that's quite handy. Ah, oh, thanks so much for clearing that up, that makes a lot of sense now, I had no idea, I just thought, well I've seen the word albino on things, it did mean some sort of pigmentation or something, I had no idea, so I'm really glad you've cleared that up and I hope that helped a lot of other viewers too understand these different morphs of snail. So my next question for you is what kind of setup is suitable for a snail? And the sort of setup that is suitable for a snail is a basic, damp, disgusting environment, as you can imagine. So a little rug or something like that would be perfect with some ventilation holes drilled in. You can also go for a glass tank if you want, although they do drag dirt up the sides and um, make it really messy, so that's a lot of effort to keep a nice tank, that's why I don't have one. And also if they fall onto the glass, there's more chance that they're going to break the shell compared to plastic, which is more flexible, so I prefer a rub. But of course you can go for a nice viewing tank if you feel more connected to snail that way, I don't know. You want substrate in there, so you want um, cocoa fibre mixed with some potting soil. You want to stay away from peat because peat is acidic and might hurt them. But they do like the hummus in the potting soil, so that's why I recommend mixing it with cocoa fibre because there's just a little bit of extra minerals there and a snail actually eats some of its soil as digestion and the bacteria in that soil helps them to digest. So it's quite important that you get some good soil. Other things, like if you need a heat mat, buy a heat mat, a thermostat, um, sphagnum moss, they love sphagnum moss. I'll just include a little view over of one of my tanks now. Um, and that'll just be a perfectly ideal setup for them. I mean, if you just try and aim for like a humid, dirty forest floor, then you're good. Ah, awesome. So I can have them in a nice viewing tank if I wanted to, but you can also go cheap like we do with some of our tarantulas in the hobby. You can go cheap with a nice rub. That's fantastic. Cheers, Jay. So my next question I'm going to be firing at you is, I have read and heard that snails can eat a vast majority of things. I saw a list, I haven't even read through it all yet. But are there any food items you would recommend that we stay away from feeding our snails? Yeah, they can eat a lot of things. Um, when I first got snails, I was so surprised to learn that they would eat other insects. I thought snails was vegetarian. I don't, I don't know. So things to stay away from include anything in sort of the onion family, you don't want to be feeding anything like onions or garlic, they can be toxic. You don't want to feed citrus things like lemon or lime. Citrus is an odd one because a lot of European countries actually recommend citrus and they feed oranges perfectly fine and it has the same sort of acidity as an apple. So if you see people feeding oranges or tangerines, um, that one's sort of 50-50. Some people like it, some people don't. So that citrus is up to you, but obviously don't feed like a lemon and a lime because that's going to be sour. You don't want to feed any rice or pasta because the starch in it causes a bloating reaction and actually somebody um, fed pasta and rice, just fed it to see if the snails liked it and um, a lot of the snails actually bloated and died unfortunately, so stay away from that. I've had people say that um, potato is bad because of the high starch content. Apples also have a high starch content, but that's another one that I'm going to refer to. But potatoes and sweet potatoes are absolutely perfectly fine, it's just the rice and pasta that have that funny issue. Sweet potato is actually a good appetite stimulant if you've got any in deep protection syndrome, so tip there for you. Celery is another one that's funny. Celery is related to the carrot family, so a lot of snails that are fine on carrot are fine with celery. Um, there was just one person on an online forum somewhere that said that they'd fed celery and it had died so now that's sort of accepted not to feed celery but you do what you want with that. And eggs. Somebody fed an egg to their snail again, it's the same as the celery. Um, people think something bad might happen, although lots of people have just fed it as a protein source without realising that it could be bad and they were absolutely fine so who knows. Ah, so the onion family makes a lot of sense. And I do like the fact that you have added in there that there has been sort of debate on certain food items because obviously as a person that has no idea I could have accidentally got that and somebody could have shouted at me and someone else said it's okay and I would have been like what's going on? So yeah no thanks for clearing that up I'll check through the definite list of ones that they are perfectly acceptable of having and I will take your advice on that too. So lastly for you Jade and if you can help everyone else out there too is there any other essentials we would need? Something that a lot of people may forget even. Is there any other essentials needed for keeping snails? I think snail mix is quite a good essential to buy actually. So a snail mix is sort of the idea of a pellet. So when you're feeding the snail, I've got a little bit of snail mix right on here. I don't know if you can see. 
motorbikes. So for a rabbit, for example, you'd feed them a pellet and then you'd feed them like greens and stuff. So for a snail, you'd feed them the snail mix and then your greens and your protein sauce. And of course, your calcium sauce, which is cuttlefish. Oh, ah, an essential, you need cuttlefish. You need a lot of cuttlefish, they go through a lot. But you can buy a massive bulk bag for like 10 pounds on Amazon and you'll probably be set for a good few months, so. Yes, snail mix is a thing that I didn't even really know existed until I got snails, so uh, it's a good essential to get. Another essential is if your house is not warm enough, don't just think the snails will be fine. Um, they do need a heat mat some species, so make sure you know species that you have and if you need a heat mat or not. And then, of course, to go with that, a thermostat, because if you have a thermostat, it's a fire risk, so don't go burning your house down, okay? And maybe some dechlorinator as well. I've, I use tap water, just personal preference, but I always dechlorinate it just to make sure it's safe for my snails and the chlorine and stuff isn't going to build up in their tank as I spray them down every day. Ah, fantastic. And I had heard of the cuttlefish as well, so I will be getting hold of some cuttlefish bone myself as well, just in preparation for if I do get myself a snail. So big, big thank you to you, Jade, and thank you to everyone that took their time to watch this video. I've hoped that cleared up a few of your questions, as it certainly did help mine. And I will be contacting Jade again in the future for any further questions I have regarding a snail that I may purchase. So thanks for watching, guys. If you want to see what else dwells within the realm, make sure to pop back weekly for multiple videos. If you don't want to have to wait for next week's videos, please check out our video to the left, our one of the longest insects in the world. We will be doing an update on our one soon. And if you pop on to the right here, the alien-like appearance of a tarantula molting, a video that is very recent of mine, but didn't hit as many views as I felt that it deserved. So please check that one out, folks, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.